Hello world, Stephen Michael Zach here, and today I am finally taking a look at the Amaran Aperture 300C. This is the color version. Now, right now, uh, at the time of the recording of this video, uh, Aperture is having a sale. I'll leave all the links uh, below. And uh, so this is roughly what it usually costs. I'll put the price right up there. Uh, but I did buy this with my own money, so these are going to be my own brutal and honest opinions as always. So let's take a look at what comes inside the box. My own brutal and honest opinions as always. This is new to me. Okay, so inside the box, first off, you're going to get uh, this foam case with these little latches here, and you flip that open. And inside, you're going to get the power cord with the safety lock. They give you an extra twisty tie. And inside here, you're going to get your power brick. And again, it is a three pin. And you do get just a little hangy doodad uh, to hang this. There is no V-mount option. You're going to get, of course, the faceted dish, your instructions and manuals and all that fun stuff, and the light itself. Now let's talk build quality. And first, I am not a fan of these foam cases. Not only are these gonna get chipped and broken when they're thrown around on set, uh, but again, this hinge is not the best. Uh, I will most likely have to put gaff tape on it because it is going to be the first thing to go. Uh, so I will most likely probably replace this. Uh, so there you go, there you have it. Now let's look at the build quality. Now first off, uh, this is made of plastic. It is solid. You do get a metal, metal hangy thing. Uh, you do get the safety lock. Everything feels nice and works very, very well. You do get the uh, faceted dish, which feels rock solid. And I would that's what I expect from anything coming from Aperture. Now let's talk about the light itself. This thing is made of plastic. Do not drop it. Uh, it is not IP rated, so you cannot use it in the rain. Uh, but it feels pretty solid. It's metal up front, uh, all plastic in the back. You do get some uh, clicky buttons in the back. I will say that when you turn these, uh, it feels very, very, very nice. Uh, so that's pretty solid. And you do get on the bottom, get a place to plug it in. And again, you get a nice locking connection. And you do get a toggle switch on off, which is fantastic. Moving around to moving to the bottom, the mount is fantastic. You get an umbrella holder and you do get this beautiful disc system. Thank you, Aperture, for putting in a disc system, not one of those awful rosette systems. And it is all metal, absolutely beautiful, uh, made of metal, really, really, really nice. And on top, you do get a release here. So yes, you can slap on the dish here and then pull that and release. Now there is a little bit of play in here, but again, you're not carrying this thing around, so that's not a big deal. Now setting this thing up is very easy. Uh, let's go ahead and just drop this on the mount and lock it into place. And we're gonna go ahead and tilt this forward. And I'll go ahead and just hook that into place. We'll plug this in and we'll take a look at the controls. Okay, so let's take a look at the controls. Now you do get the toggle switch on the bottom here. And there you go. Now, one thing to note, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this with my lights, but when you tilt the screen uh, forwards and backwards, you lose the screen. So screen, not the best. Uh, you are losing some of it. Now, left to right seems to be much better. Uh, when I move it left to right, I could still see it. Uh, so you will need to use the Citus Link app with this. Uh, that is just something to note. Now, this thing does go from 100% power all the way down to zero. And here is your 1%. It's about maybe 10%, uh, 5, 10%. So there you go. So we'll leave this at 2% here, or let's go ahead to about 10%. And again, you do get fast dialing, or you can dial this in slowly as well. Uh, just be careful that when you do this, you don't uh, push this in and change things. So now you do get this knob here. And when pressing this in, you get control over your CCT and your green magenta shift. Yes, you do get plus green magenta shift. We like to see that. And this thing goes all the way up to 7,500 Kelvin and all the way down to 2,500 Kelvin. We'll go to 39 because that's what we shoot in. And of course, you go all the way up to one point to 10 here and all the way down to negative 10. So there you go. You do get quite a bit of control here over your colors. You do of course have the Bluetooth reset to reset this and sync it with the Citus Link app. 
and pressing the button over here in, you do get your colors. Again, this controls the brightness. Um, and again, pressing this in goes between Q and saturation. Uh, and you do get 360 here. Let's go to 240 because that's my favorite color. And again, clicking here, we can desaturate that if we want to. Uh, so very, very, very cool. Very simple to use. Now let's talk fan noise. Uh, the fan noise is not bad. Right now I can't hear it. It does ramp up uh, and there's no way on the unit to control the fan noise. So do keep that in mind. Okay, so here we are, 100% power, 3900 Kelvin, uh, plus magenta 2, and uh, let's take a look at the beam. You can see there is a little bit of fall off on the beam, uh, but it looks fairly even. There's also a little bit of a hot spot this close, um, but it does look quite nice. You really can't tell on camera, um, but the beam looks pretty even to me. Let's go ahead and slap on the dish here. And... Oh, oh. With the dish on, you are getting, of course, a hot spot. And again, you're getting a little ringing on the edges here, but again, not too terrible. Uh, not the most even beam I've seen, uh, but it's just fine. A uh, little bit of fall off, a little bit of a ring on the end. Okay, so here are the multiple shadows with the dish off, and there are none, so it's pretty clean, which is very, 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 very nice. So here are the multiple shadows with the dish on and it's to be as expected. Okay, so let's talk pros and cons. Now first, let's talk about cons. You have this very, very, very heavy brick, uh, and again, I absolutely hate this. I hate these. I hate when you have to hang a brick from your light stand. It is sloppy. It tends to bounce around. Somebody walks by the light stand and hits it and the whole thing almost tips over. Uh, I really do not like these. Um, like I get it, they were trying to save money, but I would have loved if they had injection molded a V-mount here, or put in a metal V-mount, or even a place to put a spigot uh, would have been really nice. Uh, so I will have to figure out another way to mount this because I, this is just a personal preference that I cannot stand when you have to hang something. That drives me crazy. Now let's talk about some of the negatives on the light. Uh, this is, the release is fine. Um, it's not the best release, but it's not the worst release. Now, uh, when you push this in, you are gonna get a little play. Again, this is not a light you're gonna Hollywood, you're gonna be carrying around, so that is not a problem. Uh, so there you go. And swinging around to the back, you definitely do get a problem with the screen. Uh, when you tilt it forward and backwards and forwards, uh, it does disappear on you. So you will have to use the Citus Link. Again, you know how I feel about Citus Link. It works just fine, uh, but you will need to use Citus Link when this thing is up, um, just because you're not gonna be able to see the screen. Left and right, there's no problem, uh, but up and down, uh, there is a problem. The other thing is be careful when you are turning this. Uh, when you're turning this, I had a habit of accidentally pressing this in and screwing up my settings. Uh, it is very easy to click these down. Uh, that is just something to be aware of. And let's talk the fan. The fan is audible. It's not terrible. It's very much like the 100X or 200X, more like the 200X. Uh, not horrible, but not great. Um, so just be careful and talk with your sound man. Uh, I found that behind uh, a modifier, it wasn't as bad either. So, uh, but it is audible. So keep that in mind. And of course, another con is the build quality. This is plastic, be careful. Uh, it's solid plastic, but I wouldn't bang this thing around. So another negative is that the head leads are not very long. The power cord uh, is not long. So what happens is you end up leaving this on the ground and not actually hanging on your stand. Uh, if you wanna hang this on your stand, you're gonna need an extension cord. Uh, and this head lead is okay, it is longer. Uh, but again, I really wish that it were a little bit longer. Uh, if I want to boom this, uh, I'm going to need to somehow extend it. So there you go. Head leads, not that long. And lastly, I want to talk about the case. I am not a fan. I know a lot of people aren't a fan of these foam cases. Uh, when this thing starts getting thrown around, this is going to chip. This is going to break. Uh, and I will say really the only point of contention here, the only uh, thing that I'm really worried about is the, uh, the, 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 the crease here, the, 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 whatever this is called, the, this is gonna probably most likely break. Uh, so you'll see a lot of these cases with like gaff tape. 
uh, the hinge here, you'll see a lot of these cases with uh, gaff tape in the future holding this thing together. Uh, so I will most likely find a different case, like a Pelican case or something else to put this in um, because this is uh, a little concerning to me. Uh, not the best hinge in the world, but I do like the fact that uh, there's, it, this is much easier than the 100 and 200 to put away. Uh, they give you a little bit more space, which is a huge plus. Now, that is leading in to the pros, and let's talk about from the front to the back. First off, you do get a glass over the cob here, so yes, you can use this outside. One negative I forgot to mention, you cannot, it's actually two, you cannot power this with a V-mount battery, but there is another option, and this is not weatherproof, um, so just keep that in mind. Don't use it in the rain, kids. Uh, but you do, going back to the pros, you do get a, uh, a frosted uh, cover here, so you can use this outside. And sliding around to the back, you do get these very, very, very nice handles. Uh, so if, you're got, if you have the projection mount on and you're using it like a spotlight, uh, it's very easy to handle, very easy to adjust. And the buttons back here are very, very nice. You do get a bright screen, even though you do have the problem when you tilt it. Uh, you do get an umbrella holder. You get an absolutely beautiful, 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 beautiful metal mount disc system. Thank you, Aperture. This is what we all want to see on our lights from now on. We don't want to see the rosette system. I don't want to have to replace another. I don't want to have to put a neoprene washer in all of my lights. And again, I'll show you how to fix the rosette system. I have a video right there. You can go check it out on how to, how to fix that problem. But the problem is not here. Good solid metal mount. Very, very, very awesome. And let's talk about the controller, uh, the, the, the power box here. Really love the security lock. I think everything should have that. Really fantastic, really, really, really safe. And again, the dish goes on very nicely. Uh, pretty solid. Modifiers work great with this thing. Really had no problem with my third party options. So there you go, there you have it. Now, let's talk the color, the main feature of this light, and that is the color rendition. It is for a content creator slash budget light. It is fantastic. At 5,600 Kelvin, I had this thing on a plus three magenta, and this thing was spot on. It had a 0.0, .0 correction gel, which is amazing. Uh, super awesome. I really have control. Again, I'm so glad that this thing does have plus green magenta shift. Um, I do know that the new Nanlite FC series just came out, and for some reason they removed it. And I'm sorry, at this point in time, every single bicolor light needs to have plus green magenta shift due to the way that uh, bicolors work on a planking curve. With that said, let's talk about 3200 Kelvin at plus one, plus two magenta. This was maybe a 0.2 or 0.3, sometimes 0.7 correction gel, but not enough to where if you, you would need a spectrometer to know this and I actually have a spectrometer. So uh, pretty spot on. I would say you want to have it turned mostly to like a, 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 a plus one or plus two magenta pretty much everywhere you go uh, for when you're using this. At 4,400 Kelvin at a plus two magenta, again, this was spot on. At 5,600 Kelvin, uh, these readings, of course, are all from 100% power. At 5,600 Kelvin, uh, when I started to dim this thing, again, it kept its color. It was at a 0.0, .0 correction gel. So really very, very, very nice. And when you're talking about the RGB in here, uh, beautiful, very saturated, very strong, looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, I have no problem with any kind of a light coming from this, uh, this cob. So really, really, really fantastic. So those are my thoughts, but I wanna know yours. So leave your questions and comments in the notes below. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to mash that bell button to be notified we drop a brand new video. And feel free to use the links below as it helps out the channel. And don't forget to join our brand new mailing list. I'm Stephen Michael Zach, and this is new to me.